the Tim Anderson Podcast. I'm Tim. That is my buddy, Ryan. Hello, Rhino. Back again. Good to see you again. And, of course, uh, Zach, knee neighbor on the other side, the coach, the owner. Hey, Zach. How's it going, guys? Oh Jesus Christ! I gotta tell. You. First of all, it feels like a <laughs> feels like a brand new season of the pod because we haven't been around uh, in about a month, and uh, I'll get into that in just a minute. But first, I just wanna, I just need a minute. I just need a minute to talk about this because I got to get it out of my system. Because if I keep this in me, I've learned this as I get older that if I keep this rage in me. Uh, it it doesn't uh, it doesn't go away. It doesn't help the problem. It just stays with me, and I get an ulcer or whatever. So here it is, Zach. You're a homeowner. You get this. Ryan, you're a homeowner now. You get this. Um, well, I'm not an owner. I'm a renter. Home renter now. It. You get. Well, yeah, you don't give a shit about this. This could happen to you. It doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's be real honest. All right, Zach, stay with me. Get up this morning. Well, first of all, last night I get home. I, I shut the garage door because we come back in, and all of a sudden, I hear this loud bang at the end. And I'm like, eh, that didn't sound good, but what? Well, garage door shut. Time to go to bed. Get up this morning. Garage door opens a quarter of the way. Damn it. Spring broken. Spring broken. I had a little cable that snapped or whatever it was, yeah. and the, the, the roller's off the track. And I got to do everything in my power to, to kind of hulk up this uh, this garage door so I could get the cars out this morning so we could go to work. I call the garage door people, and I'm first of all, the, the home association goes, yeah, it's a you problem, not a me problem. All right, sounds good. Deal. Call uh, the garage door guy that they recommended to me, and he's like, yeah, you know, I can't get to that till uh, Saturday. And I'm like, Saturday? Dude, what... What is the problem here? What, is, what do you mean Saturday? Three days? Three? How many people have garage door problems? What is the problem here? The parts coming by the way of the Panama Canal? What's the problem? So he's like, yeah, I can't do it. I'm like, Saturday's no good. I call somebody else. And they're like, yeah, we can get out there one to four, between one and four this afternoon. Hey, great. I'll take it. Sign up for it. I'll take it. Whatever. Just get me my garage door open. They uh, call me at 4.30. Listen, we've been trying to call you. Uh, my phone, let's grant it. Now, my phone has been sitting next to me with full bars for three plus hours with the ringer on. No call. No call. Nobody has called. Phone has not rang one time. Not one goddamn time it has not rang. They're like, yeah, we've been frantically trying to reach you. Uh, and we just haven't been able to get a hold of you. So uh, all of our guys have gone home for the night. And we're not going to be able to get the garage door done for you today. And a little part of me, like, I, I haven't had, like, a meltdown in a long time. But I had one today. I was fuming mad. I've never been so angry. Because she goes, I now, saw him hurl his phone. I, I, she says, when is the next available time that's convenient for you? I said, right fucking now! It's right now. That's the next convenient time. It's not tomorrow. It's right now. So the better question really is, when is it convenient for you? And she comes back with 7.30 or 8.30 tomorrow morning. Not convenient for me. Well, we can do that while you're at work. It's no problem. Well, if that was the case, why did you need me to answer the phone between 1 and 4 today if it was that urgent? She's like, yeah, just give us a way in the house and we'll be fine. The front door's unlocked. Along with a big sign to the big crack addicts across the street. Hey, come on in. Come on in. There's deli turkey in the fridge. Have a great time. <laughs> It sounds like you need a better garage door guy. <laughs> so, so it's going to happen. But then she's like, but I am going to need that credit card information for tomorrow. I'm going to go, I bet oh. you do. You got to get your money though, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure. It's all fun and games. So I'm waiting for my garage door tomorrow. The problem is, is here. The problem is they have you by the balls. They know you need the garage open. They know you have to get in there. They know you need them. Damn it! Yeah, I, Kate, Caitlin's got a garage door guy. I don't know who the contact was, but our our, our spring broke here at the 
you know, since we've been here in the last three years. Um, and they come out, right, and, and like, I don't know about yours, but mine, mine has two springs. Yeah. And they're basically like, well, if one went, the other one could go any time. <laughs> so, right, they upsell you, they get them both. And it's like, well, you might as well do them both because, you know, and it's the same thing, right? When you're, when your spring breaks and the whole door pulls, then it pulls the track off. It pulls, I mean, it's a whole big thing, you know, and, and yes, it is, it is a racket, right? Like you, I mean, cause, cause at the point is, even if you t- shut off the garage door opener right now and just did it by, it still is not going to open for you. No, it's not. It's not going to open. There's no good. To, it's no good right now. It's just useless. And meanwhile, uh, it, it's just sitting there half open. I mean, nobody's going to crawl underneath there unless they're 78 pounds or they're, you know, a contortionist or something like that. But my, it just, it's unbelievable to me that we got to this place so quickly, but hopefully we'll get it back open tomorrow and, uh, I can resume my sanity. Um, because man, I'll tell you, I, I, I lost it. I lost my mind for a minute today. And I know people are gonna say, Anderson, first world problems, you know, gas is $6 a gallon. What the fuck are you worried about dealing with your stupid nonsense in your garage door? And that's fair. That's very fair. Some people don't have garages. I understand that. I understand that. Ryan, Ryan doesn't like garages. Did barely ever use the garage. But before you didn't I, need I, a garage. I, used, I, I didn't have a garage. I used my garage. But that's what I'm saying. Like, Part of what I paid for when I bought the house was the garage. Like, that was the whole thing. Like, oh, my God, a garage for the first time ever in my life. And now that I have it, I'm not giving it up. I don't want to give it up. It's too nice. We, we Our, our three-car garage is primarily man cave. I wish in, I had in the, that. I wish. In the, in the winter, Caitlin parks in it, so we get one car in. What I wouldn't um, give, what I wouldn't give for a man cave in the garage. I would turn my cl- my garage into a man cave and not worry about this whole operation. But Carrie needs to park in there. But the, the majority of the the year we've got, I mean, the pool table's still up right now, right? But it's just too cold out there to really use it. Um, so we've got pool table, dartboard, craps table. Not for long, couch, my friend. We'll stereo. be in that garage real soon. It's gonna be fifty out here next week. You, you gonna get the golf simulator set up? Oh, when are we gonna get that set up at your house, dude? That's what we have to do next. Oh, okay. Nice. I want to thank you for indulging me on this rant. I appreciate that, everybody. Well, it's my podcast. I'll do whatever the hell I want. If I want to come on here and own a <laughs> rant, I will do it. <laughs> but there's there a reason we're here. This is what you get in the new season of the podcast. You give me four weeks off. I'm coming back loaded for bear. And that's what we're getting going forward. Yes, but we are here for a reason. You know, it's funny. We take four weeks off from the Super Bowl. The last time we spoke, you guys, uh, there was a big football game about to be done. That football game is now well in the rears, and the NFL is still the number one story in the league, uh, in the sports world. Number one story, and it has been for the last three days. Um, these last couple of days have been just bananas, uh, yeah. and that's why we had to call an emergency pod, get the bat signal up, get the boys back in. Let's talk some uh, some offseason football stuff, gentlemen. Uh, where do we want to start like, there's so much to get to. Where do we start? Zach, where do we start? I think we have to start with all the quarterback drama. We got to start with all... Okay, there we go. Let's start with the biggest domino that ended up not falling, ended up staying. But I think the fact that he stayed started the whole operation. Uh, you're the owner, Zach. You kind of predicted it. You said Aaron Rodgers was going to stay in Green Bay. Uh, you said he was going to stay with Shailene Woodley. So far, you seem right on both counts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you... <laughs> He's all in, and they went to the wedding together. So it seems like uh, the rumors of their demise were greatly exaggerated. Uh, true or false, the reason they split before was they couldn't decide on a wedding gift for David Bakhtiar. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with false. They argued over the menu. They were like, what is Bakhtiari serving? Well, it's some kind of steak dish or something. Oh, I don't know. Ooh. Ah, is there a, are you sure Ooh, there's not a, I don't know. Ooh, is there a kale smoothie there that's being served instead? Can I get one of those? Anyway. I, well, I mean, let's 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 just talk about this here objectively for a second, right? We, it really didn't make sense for him to go anywhere else. No, right? Yeah, I probably mean, what right. what was on the table that would be a better situation than Green Bay? And right, you got You got to think that Green Bay didn't want to deal him in the NFC, right? Unless they just got an ungodly offer for him. If Denver was willing to give that though for Russell Wilson. Wouldn't they have at least given that to Green Bay for Aaron Rodgers? Maybe more? Probably. I mean, you know, Wilson's six years younger. Fair. Very fair. So but... that 
that could be part of it. But and and again, I, I mean, I'm not I'm not knocking the deal. Like if if they had dealt him for a similar deal to Denver, then you know it wouldn't it would not have been the end of the world. But he do you do you really think that that would have been a better situation for him? He doesn't want to go play there. I can't imagine. Well, you certainly don't want to play in that division where you're playing Mahomes twice, you're playing Herbert twice, you're playing. Derek Carr twice. I don't know if that's what can, you want. Can to we do. pump the brakes on the Herbert love a little bit? No, I agree. I'm not saying Herbert's the next thing. He's not. He's not even in Patrick Mahomes' class. I'm just saying that if you're comparing playing Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields, and uh, Jared Goff twice a year versus playing those three guys, I don't think that's close. Well, all, all week, it, or maybe not all week, but right, the last 24 hours, it's been about how you know how Denver upgraded so much and. The Raiders have the worst quarterback in the division. And yeah, Justin Derek Herbert might, might be, suck. He he may not be good. Derek Carr might be the best number four quarterback in a division ever. Um, last I checked, of those four guys, two of them played in the playoffs last year, and Derek Carr was one of them. The Raiders are good. Derek Carr is good. I was I was pounding that drum all year, and I'll do it again here today. Like, and now that I, don't, I mean. And now that you you went on a limb to get Pit Boss Rich into the fold in Green Bay, I mean everything is uh, coming up roses for you. Well, I just I mean like I yes, Herbert has shown some flashes, right? Yep, absolutely. But are we are we convinced that he's that good, Ryan? I think he's pretty darn good. <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not saying he's I'm, bad. I'm not, but I'm not going to sit here and say he's the best quarterback in the NFL, but I definitely think he's. If we're talking about that, the NF, the AFC West might be loaded. I think he's definitely worthy of a conversation of being in that, you know, in that class of quarterbacks that would make it loaded. I just, I just don't. Let me put it. Let me rephrase it this way, right? Nobody is saying, "Man, I don't want to go to the AFC West because of Justin Herbert," and they're not saying that about Derek Carr either. Yeah, but. I feel like the Herbert hyperbole. There's some alliteration for you. That's very good. We can call that the name of the, the pod. We I would call it the name of the pod, but we're only going to talk about Herbert for another 30 seconds here, probably. So I, I, I think I think he's got. Obviously, there's some steps that that roster has to take, and you'd like to see his top receivers stay healthy. But I mean, he's, I mean, he he is a a really good young quarterback. Right. I, I don't mind him at all. Oh, but I, I I don't mind pumping the brakes on him either. So. Okay, so just rewinding here with Ro- the Rogers Sox for a second. So you know, Denver isn't that great of a. He's not closer to winning a Super Bowl in Denver than he is in Green Bay. Right. He's not closer to winning a Super Bowl in Pittsburgh than he is in Green Bay. Sorry, I hate you know. Going. Yeah. What What other options were were true destinations for him? I guess. I will say that the weapons in Denver with Aaron Rodgers are probably, uh, as probably they're probably more deadly in Denver than they are in Green Bay. The, the weapons around him. Uh, so I'll, Stop. You, if you, you give me Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, KJ Hamler uh, in, in that offense with Aaron Rodgers, you know that. Yeah, Devonte Adams is better than all three of them, but everything below Devonte Adams, I, I would I would take the, the Aaron Rodgers Jones, for, AJ uh, Dillon. I'm I'm not I'm not as big on the Packers running backs as you are. I, I'm I don't think Aaron, Aaron Jones isn't consistent and AJ Dillon hasn't been consistent, you know, for a whole year either. So and they're not gonna rely on the running game wherever Aaron Rodgers goes. He's the showcase piece. It's it's a secondary part of the offense. Yeah, but those Aaron those Rodgers guys are catching there. passes too from him. I, I think you're crazy if you think I I Adams is number one with a bullet of all those guys. No, I, I again I, I like I said it's. I believe Devonte Adams is better than those guys, but everything below Devonte Adams is is worse than those three guys. Hmm. So I, I would I would say that I, I think that on you know averaging them out, yes, they have the better one better receiver in Green Bay than all of them, but the rest of their their wide receiver core is better than everything else Green Bay has. I think you I, also have to consider the the word was they were not trading Rodgers there without Judy coming back. Hmm. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't have had that there either. But anyway, so I think overall, right, it just made sense for him to stay. Yeah. The, the real interesting thing is Russ going there. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, think that seemed to be his number one choice, right? I, you know, was it? I didn't know if that was his number one choice or not. It felt like, I mean, maybe that came out of left field, but maybe you have more steam on that than I do. I didn't see that one coming. It, it sounds like he turned down trades to uh, Philadelphia and Washington 
Uh, and he, and yeah, there was talk like he just didn't want to go East Coast. Period. Yeah. Interesting. And, and so they, that would, Pittsburgh wasn't on the table either. Yeah, they, I mean they they said that uh, Washington offered significantly more than the Broncos did, and it was Russell Wilson that nixed it. Um, so what? I mean, we've seen what Washington has done, but for all intents and purposes, it sounds like it's a one-year deal, right? For Russell? If yeah. For Wilson? No, for Wentz. Oh, for Wentz. Well, we'll get to Washington. that. Yeah, I definitely want to. That's probably true. I'll, I'll, I want to stay with Russ for just a second because I think there's a couple interesting things with this. So, yes, if Rodgers Roger stays in Green Bay, uh, there was talk that it was a four-year, $200 million. Now, Rodgers has disputed that. Uh, Pat McAfee show came out and said that they, they think it's a cap-friendly deal. Um, so we don't really know the numbers on that yet, but Denver f- uh, moves quickly. They make the trade for Russell Wilson. For those of you who haven't seen it, they're getting – Ryan, help me with this to remind me. It's Drew Locke, Noah Fa- yep. uh, Fant, Shelby Harris, yep. uh, a first – is it two firsts and a second? Yeah, it's a first this year, a first next year, a second, and then they're receiving back a fourth. That is a That is a major haul for the Seahawks to get. Uh, this is an interesting question, Ryan. Maybe you can start with this one. I understand it from Denver's perspective. Denver says, we got offensive weaponry. We got a pretty decent defense. We've just hired this offensive-minded coach. We've got to be willing to do what the Rams have done, and that is move picks, get get better at the quarterback position, and start winning right now. The question on the Seattle side is interesting, though, because I understand they wanted to move Wilson. They got a huge package back. But the coach staying there is kind of interesting. They've cleared out Bobby Wagner. They just released him. They've released Wilson. Carroll is the only thing that's sustained from that era where they were really successful. Are you surprised that he, well, first of all, a week earlier at the Combine, he said none of this was happening, so he's a total liar anyway. But are you surprised he's still there? Are you surprised that this move happened while he was still the coach? Well, and in addition to all of these, you also have that the, the reports that Seattle's exploring a trade for DK Metcalf as well. Just blowing the whole uh, it, thing up, huh? It 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 sounds like they're trying to acquire as many pieces in cap space as possible. Uh, I, I personally, I don't understand that. If you're going to do that, I would move on from the coach as well. But I understand why the coach has some credibility. But there's nobody in charge there. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. They're talking about possibly selling the team, and there's nobody above Pete Carroll on the football side of things, and everybody in the you know the ownership side of things wants to be hands off. So Pete's his own box with no checks and balances. So if, if they're selling the team, I mean, it, it may come with Pete Carroll, but it may not come with Pete Carroll. But we remember, I mean, Tim and I have talked about this before. You remember what happened when Red McComb sold the Vikings. They just shed as many assets as possible uh, to make the team, you know, as, as sellable as possible. But that included uh, the coach. They, I mean, they were paying Mike Tice, a, you know, a fraction of what they'd pay other NFL coaches. You're paying Pete Carroll a lot of money. You, no, you're absolutely right, but you know that may that may be a move down the line, but until that happens, they may just be sticking with Pete Carroll, and he may just retire when they decide to sell the team. I don't know how the, what the likelihood of that is. I'm just spitballing at this point. But you're right; it is weird that if if you're going to completely rebuild everything, that you would keep the coach uh, and and nobody above him. Zach, they're not thinking of going with Drew Locke as the quarterback next year in Seattle, are they? I mean, are they looking at maybe drafting a guy? Is there a trade? I mean, they're not trying to run this out with this, are they? I think it's a good discussion because there's a lot of um, a lot of teams that still probably need a quarterback, and the options are limited now. And so they might. They, I mean, they might have to run it out there with him, and they might. But maybe they're okay with that, right? Maybe they're thinking it's a year and rebuild. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah, I, Go ahead, Ryan. I, I I don't hate the the idea of that. The uh, uh, the thought that I had was maybe you could you could pick somebody up like Gardner Minshew and and just kind of have a a fun gunslinger back there for a year and get this all figured out. And if it goes poorly, you just have a high draft pick next year with the uh, with the Broncos pick as well and hope that hope that the Russell Wilson experiment fails a little bit and you have two high picks next year. Uh, you know, but but at this point, I mean, it's it's hard to say. It's a huge gamble if you're Seattle. You're kind of committing to a long rebuild. This isn't one of those short retoolings like the te- like uh, a lot of teams are, around the league have kind of taken to doing the last few years. They're committing to something that's really long term here, uh, where you have to find a quarterback, you've got to find a new middle linebacker, you've got to rebuild the defense, you've got to completely rebuild an offense around a new player. 
Uh, presumably your coach is going to be gone, you know, either at the end of this year or next year, uh, you know, either retired or, or fired. There's, there's a lot of flux here. Do they have a GM? Is John Schneider still their GM? See, I don't know if he is or not. I don't I, think I'm he is. I'm telling right? you, Pete's making all the decisions. Yeah. I think that, I think that's true, right? I feel like Pete's, you know, Pete clearly signed off on it, if nothing else, right? I mean, he had to have said, yep, all of that, trade all of that for all these pieces. Absolutely. The yeah, North, I mean, go ahead. John John Schneider is still there, but this is the Pete Carroll show. Sure, you know I they could be possibly in the love discussion. That's a good point. You know, you brought could, love up a couple times in our text, Zach. Is love on the market? I mean, with this Rogers trade or with this Rogers signing, maybe that means love is on the market. But I haven't heard I Green Bay come out and say that. I don't know. I don't know what they'll necessarily get for him, and if they don't get a big enough offer for him. They may be content to hang on to him right now um, as the backup. But if you get an offer, you know, if you get an offer of a second or a third round pick, I think he probably has to, they'll probably move him. Does this feel at all to you like the Jimmy Garoppolo situation when Tom Brady was still in New England, where you you know you have only a, only a couple of years left of Aaron Rodgers uh, on, on the team, and you're, you are kind of looking for that heir apparent, but it's not time yet, and he's, you know the deal's going to run out, so you want to get something for the backup sort of thing? Yeah, right, exactly. If, you're, if you think Aaron's going to be there for four years, and we haven't seen the deal, but it sounds like four years is in the discussion, and he might play for, what, two or three of those. Right. Um, you, if, if Love's not going to see the field at all for you, then you probably have to move him. But like I said, like if the, if the offer's only like a fourth-round pick back, then you might just go, you know what, we'll hang on to him. He'll be our backup. Because um, you never know when you might need him, too. Now, the I, I do think he, they will take – offers on him and I do think he'll end up starting somewhere this year. It's interesting. Um, there's still there's enough value there. And if you're a team like the Seahawks now, right? If you're the Seahawks and you have a boatload of picks, like you can risk a second or a third round pick on Jordan Love. Because if it works, now you've got a quarterback for another Yeah, decade. Years. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? You know, and so that that's the and and you have extra draft capital to play with. Um so I, th- I think that that's worth it for them. Um, you know, the hard part is if you talk about a team like Indy, who, you know, the rumor is they're also interested in love and that they were interested in him on draft day. Uh, but they don't really have assets now, right? They're short picks. And unless you, I don't know, unless like one of those third round picks is going to get it done, I they don't have a lot to give. They don't have... You know they're already short a first round pick. You, you can't. Are you going to give up a second and not have a first or a second round pick this year? I don't know. It's a good transition uh, into think- this with this Ryan because you're an Indianapolis Colts guy. Let's transition a little bit into this Wentz trade because um, I saw Darius Leonard's tweet today where he talked about, yeah, man, great five quarterbacks in five years. This will be sweet. Uh, it sounded like he was really excited about the idea of starting completely over again. But this Wentz thing fizzled out really quickly in Indy, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's it was kind of exactly what da- what uh, uh, Zach predicted last year. It's fair, uh, which was you know, he's a complete mess, and they're going to regret the move. And there's absolutely no way that they should have traded what they traded for him. Uh, and and the the Eagles kind of fleeced him, and we're kind of seeing this now. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that uh, Yannick Ngakwe trade that the Vikings made uh, out of desperation when they needed a defensive end. You know, you trade a second round pick, you turn around four weeks later and and get a fourth round pick back. Uh, you know, here you, you trade your, your first round pick and you know, you're going to get a couple of thirds back. Is the value really equivalent? No. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, I, I don't know. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a carousel there in Indianapolis. You kind of, you haven't really had a, a solid starting quarterback since Andrew Luck and he hasn't started week one since 2017. So we're coming up on year five of not having anything stable at the quarterback position. Uh, and I don't know. You kind of you kind of wonder if maybe they're going to be a player for uh, someone who who's a little more stable, uh, someone who can who can just be just be the guy for a year or two while you maybe look for the for your long term answer. But that's the problem, but, though, right? The long the the, the stopgap thing is what why they're in this mess. They go from Luck in 2018 to Jacoby Brissett to Philip Rivers. Now you go Carson Wentz because you thought maybe that would be your long term guy. Now you're starting your fifth guy, and if he's a stopgap, that means next year you're looking at six and six years. I feel well, like I mean, if- let's let's think about it this way, though, right? I mean, when was the last time that a free agent signing quarterback 
uh, was the long term answer for a team? Was it Drew Brees? It was Kirk I mean, Cousins. It was, was, I mean, it was, is is Kirk, Kirk Cousins is the longest term we've had, but we we've all agreed that it's not been what we'd hoped it was, right? No. Drew Brees was the answer because he brought a title to the team. Kirk Cousins is clearly not the answer. It was an experiment. It's failed, right? It's there are a lot of people who are saying it's time to move on. You know, it's that it's not been consensus with Kirk Cousins. It was consensus with Drew Brees, and he's the last example I can think of. So wait, what is, that what was is a, the question a real here? The question was but last who, free agent who's signing. Real, or who's what? the real long-term answer for a team that brought a lot of success that was signed through free agency at quarterback? I, I can't think of a single one. Okay. So but my, my point is that the, the long-term answer comes through the draft. Peyton Manning maybe for the Broncos, right? But even then, do you call four yeah. years long-term, four or five years long-term? I don't know if that's... I'd say that's a, that's long-term, yeah. right? That's in, in the NFL, five years is long-term. And and I, I think that, yeah, maybe Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, but these are Hall of Fame guys, right, that are that are switching teams. You know, I, and, and Russell Wilson's a trade, so we can't count him. It would have been... Uh, you know, there's a couple of would bees that that would have worked there, but they're just when you sign a quarterback in free agency, it's because every other team has decided this guy's not a guy that we're willing to trade for, and he's not a guy that we're willing to sign right away. So, is he really a long term answer? No, but you're not really going to have a long term answer for somebody who's in the league right now. Is my point. You, you got to draft that guy, and I, I just don't think that the Colts have tried that in a while. So that leaves this big weird carousel now, right, uh, Zach? Because there's this – right now what's left is Deshaun Watson, who's in murky legal water still. You have a, a Cousins rumor that's floating out there. And then a whole bunch of dudes, right? Just a whole bunch of guys that are maybe retreading, looking for another chance. Jordan Love, Mitchell Trubisky, Gardner Minshew. Maybe it's Baker Mayfield, uh, Jameis Winston. What's – What's next? And and we'll get into the Washington Commanders in a minute because, oh, by the way, they're the Washington Commanders. Um, although I think we talked about that. The Washington Commanders. That, that, that's new on the podcast. Is that new on the podcast, that. That the Washington Commanders? Anyway, the Commanders have traded for Carson Wentz now. Wentz, is that an upgrade over tight Taylor Heineke? And if that's the case, here comes Taylor Heineke. Ryan Fitzpatrick might be out there. Uh, kind of cover all it's, of that it's for an us. Upgrade over, it's an upgrade over Heineke, but... That's not saying much. Ryan right? I mean, I don't, I don't, years old. So this is the weird thing, right? Like, I, I do not like Carson Wentz. No, you're very clear about that. Um, and I, I was the Wentz guy last that. year. I was the Wentz supporter last year. I was I was wrong. I was wrong. Sorry. Right. It's, it's still probably a good deal for Washington. Yeah. To, you know, a second and a third for him, right? And they're swapping second round picks and other, right? So... Right. The official deal is swapping seconds and a third and a third, but one of those thirds can become a second round pick. Right. You right. Know, and it probably will, right? If he has to start like 70% or hey, um, 70%. With, with next, Carson Wentz's so. injury history in FedEx field, do you really like that? I mean, that seems. Yeah, uh... well, that's true. That is true. <laughs> uh, but. So He'll be I'll, in a I'll full body like, cast. Right? So for two thirds, he's definitely an upgrade over what they had. Well, that's probably fair. But you also have to feel like with this quarterback carousel, they came up short, right? They got the short end of the stick compared to everything else that they could have had. I mean, but who else could? They, I mean, could they have had? I mean, is Gar- I mean, you'd take Wentz over well, Gardner they, Minshew. They came up short compared to they didn't come away with Russ. They didn't come away with yeah, that's fair. Rogers. You know, they don't. They didn't get a big name out of the deal. Yeah, Wentz is definitely better than maybe Gardner Minshew, or uh, I mean, you could argue he's better than Garoppolo. No, he's not better than Garoppolo. I mean, I mean, if you're Indy, do you want Garoppolo? And that's I, the other thing. Where does he fit into all of this? So, what, from what I've heard, like I, I instantly thought Garoppolo to Indy makes a lot of sense. Yep. Right. Indy feels like they're in a good spot, and they need a guy to come in and not mess it up. Right. Right. And that seems like Jimmy G. Right. Like he can come in and and be okay and not mess it up. Um, but then the reports came out today that their GM liked love on draft day, that they were trying to get love, um, and that's why Green Bay moved up. Now, do they go back to that well? Maybe. Um, I think one of those two guys ends up the starter, though, in Indy. So you think it's either love Garoppolo or love. or love? Yep. So when the – that's kind of – go ahead. 
the, the the real interesting one to me then becomes like what happens in Pittsburgh. Yep. Tampa Bay, right? Carolina's probably still needy. <laughs> I'd say they what's, are needy. What's 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 New Orleans gonna do? Yep. Yep. Right, and then how is Seattle going to approach it? Right, like I'm not 100 percent convinced that Seattle doesn't just go, "Hey, we're going to suck anyway, so we'll suck with Drew Locke for a year." Yeah, and then we'll draft Matt Corral or, or Matt Corral. What's his yeah. name? What's his name? Ryan Corral. Corral. Matt Corral. Draft Matt Corral. Sweet. Run Drew Locke out there, make it happen. What about okay? I, you know, go, what about the music stopping here though? Because I mean, there's other variables, right? Watson's still a variable. Kirk Cousins right. is a variable. Like as soon as, as much as Kirk Cousins gets shit on, he's far and away a better option than half of the guys that are out there. And if he becomes available well, and you're a desperate team, you 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 have to at least call. You have to at least see if there's interest. Watson's the number one option right now if he can play. If he can play, yeah. and we and we may know more about that on Friday, right? I right. Mean, people may be listening to this now, and Watson already has a new home because the rumor is the Steelers are hot and heavy for him if he. Gets everything taken care of on Friday. They even promised him his own masseuse. They said, like, hey, we'll and get the, you a masseuse. Everything will be fine. The, the Steelers yeah. carrying water for an alleged sexual abuser? Weird. How does that work? Stop that. You so, stop that. Yeah, just picking right up where they left off. That is no okay, way to so talk Watson's, about Franco Harris. Watson's the number one guy. Watson is the number from, one guy. From there, I think you have, like, you have Cousins and maybe Baker Mayfield. Right. I forgot about Mayfield. Right. But I mean, I don't, I'm not convinced either of those guys are moving. Yeah, you're probably right. I think both those guys will be with their teams. I, I think unless, unless a team comes and offers a Russell Wilson type deal for those guys, which I don't think is going to happen, let's be really clear. It takes a significant not. amount of desperation for a team to make that kind of move. Absolutely. There's but, no way those uh, but, deals happen. Sh- but short of that happening, both teams are pretty content to stand pat with their quarterbacks, it feels like. You think so? You think KOC, the new coach? We call him KOC. We got a good vibe for him here in Minnesota. You think uh, you you think the new coach in Minnesota likes Cousins enough that he's not going to come in and just be like, "I got to blow this up. I can't have this guy." I, I think regardless of what the coach thinks of the quarterback this year, the, the GM's looking at the numbers and seeing we've got one more year where we Com- got to eat the cap anyway. Compromise. We trade him. It's going to yeah. we 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 trade him, and we're going to have to eat a significant amount of that cap anyway. But we so we eat one more year of him on the books. We can maybe extend him a little bit and have a trade option for him next year where the cap's not so bad. I don't know. I, Gotta I'm collaborate. The, 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 Gotta the collaborate way the numbers the way the numbers work, you brought a coach in who likes him, and you brought in a GM who's a who's a wait and see kind of guy anyway. I'll I'll say this. I think the most likely deal for either of those guys is they get swapped for each other. Ooh. That's a that's yeah that's something I was I was thinking too. Now that so, is I, delicious. So I think I don't see them going anywhere else. Okay, so now we're talking Garner Minshew. Yep. Um, we're talking about Jameis Winston. Correct. Maybe Teddy. He'll stop the gap uh, somewhere. Yep, he yep. will be somewhere. Trubisky. You bring up Trubisky a lot in our text chain. You think Trubisky. I worry. We talked about this last night. That I worry that the fan bases have checked out on Trubisky. That he'll always be compared to Mahomes, and he's like, I mean, he's, he's poison. But you don't think so. You think Trubisky's going to get a shot somewhere? I mean, he's always going to be compared to Mahomes. But I think that the people have looked at the Bears the last three years and said maybe it wasn't all him, right? And I mean, there's talk that the Giants are interested in him, right? Dable's there now. And that the Giants might bring him in and have him compete with Daniel Jones for the job. If I'm Trubisky, I don't know if that's the job I want. I mean, if I'm Trubisky, I, f- I feel like I can I can make enough calls, and that I'm going to start somewhere. Doesn't doesn't it feel that? I mean, how many? Because because the draft the draft isn't that deep. That's it's not true. like there's four guys coming in from the draft. They're going to start day one. Some interesting breaking news here from Jason Lockenfora. Uh, the Vikings sound like they are eager to move away from big contracts and reset their cap payroll. Kirk Cousins trade wouldn't surprise him. Other contracts up for trade potential right now are Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Michael Pearson, Eric Kendricks. Wow. Any of those would be I, I know big we're moves. Talking, I know we're talking QBs, but I would get out of that Thielen deal as soon as I could. Yeah, 100%. Well, all he does is catch touchdowns, but 
you know. Hey, I love Adam Thielen. Everybody does. But if you can get if you can get value for Adam Thielen right now, that's the time. There was some talk originally on the, I don't mean to go back to Cousins on this, but when when the Cousins stuff really heated up when the Carolina rumor was floating, uh, there was a significant amount of talk that wherever Cousins goes, Thielen will also go. Yeah, Thielen wants uh, to go there too. So there there would be a it might be a, a package deal with Cousins and Thielen. Uh in in where wherever they end up, and to be honest, this is something just to go back to this real quick. The Houston idea of swapping quarterbacks. Jack Easterby is one of the front office guys in Houston. He's best friends with Kirk Cousins' dad. He's known Kirk Cousins for years. Here comes uh, that. How do you know this shit? This is unbelievable. Uh, you are the worst. They're, you're they're you're, you're in, like they're, Mike they're Florio. Neighbors, they're neighbors in Orlando. Uh, and and Easterby has been to his church in Michigan multiple times. Kirk Cousins, uh, yeah, his dad, and uh, and the GM of the Texans garage door repair man. Uh, okay, you know, had dealt with a broken spring once, and he came over right away and immediately fixed it. Didn't screw him out of the job, and now they're best <laughs> friends. Okay, back here on planet Earth. Um, <laughs> I just here's so Minshew will end up starting somewhere. Trubisky will end up starting somewhere. I think love ends up starting somewhere. Wow, that's huge. Um, the, I mean, do the Saints go with Simeon or do they? They've got to no. They can't. They can't run Taysom Hill or Trevor Simeon out there. Cannot do that. Yeah, unless I, they want to go two and fourteen or two and fifteen. So I think that there's that. That's what I'm saying, right? There's just too many jobs out there that Trubisky doesn't get one of them. I think. You know, yeah. he's still cheap. Yeah. He's still cheap. You can bring him in for a year or two, and if it doesn't work, you can move on. Yeah, that still leaves all the other guys, too, the the Gardner Minshews of the world. That still leaves the Ryan Fitzpatricks if he's got another year. That still leaves the um, you know, Taylor Heineke is going to go somewhere. Uh, there, there's all these guys that are going to end up somewhere when the music stops, and I just uh, that that's going to be something to watch. Ryan, will any of the drafted QBs start day one? Uh, I think that uh, Malik Willis could start day one. He's going to be a little bit more of a developmental guy. I think that Kenny Pickett has small hands, but oh, here we go. He'll with start the hands. day one. This is on this look, hands look, thing me, is re- come really on, clear. Ryan. Let me be really clear. Just because you have these sausage hands, you're. St- I mean, I, what does that have to do with anything? I don't buy into the into the the hands thing as much as other people do. I don't. But his hands are remarkably small. What does that have to do uh, with anything? He has to wear gloves to hold the ball, Tim, or he fumbles the ball. I'm not kidding. Tim, my <laughs> it, my hands are bigger than his. It's a legitimate problem for him. After after, him after they did the thing, like I measured, and I am is. like bigger by an inch. <laughs> for for him, it's a significant problem. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I think Matt Corral's got the the kind of the kind of legs that could start. Uh, but that's that's what you're getting with with kind of all three of those top three guys in the draft right now at quarterback is they're kind of inconsistent throwers. They've all got knocks against them, uh, but they're all able to move the ball with their legs. Uh, Malik Willis more than anybody. Think of Lamar Jackson. Uh, the, the way that, that the draft network actually has him compared is think of Jordan Love with rocket shoes. Uh, oh, a guy who can't pass too? Like another guy who can't who hasn't proven they can pass? Well, all, all of these guys are inconsistent. Let's be really clear. There is not a clear answer among any of them. Uh, but if you're looking for for pure physical tools and a guy that could develop, Malik Willis is your guy. So the bottom line here to both of you is the 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 carousel's not done stopping. That we're going to no. see a bunch more moves in the next couple weeks, especially leading up to draft day. A lot of guys are still on the move here before this is done. We might yeah. be back for quarterback carousel part two in a couple weeks. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do think I still think that we're going to see. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be trades the rest of the way, but I, I do think that that Kirk Cousins eventually moves oh. uh, somewhere around here. Um, Did you I, trade I would be for Jared surprised. Goff straight up? Yeah, right. Jared I'd Goff or Kirk Cousins? Who says that, no? If he's the uh, the Vikings say no, I imagine that. <laughs> uh, uh, I do think we're gonna we're gonna see that trade in the next couple of weeks. I'll be very surprised if he's the starting quarterback in Minnesota next really? year. Really? Wow. I I'm fascinated. I can't wait to to see that. Uh, I we will um definitely keep an eye on car- uh, quarterback carousel uh, off season part one or two. All right, uh, got to shift gears. Got to shift gears because this is the other big story that hit before all the quarterback stuff, and now it's kind of fading away. 
and you guys come on two different sides of the spectrum here. I will save my opinion till the end because I want to let you two obviously have the uh, Stephen A. Smith, Mad Dog Russo first take kind of battle here, uh, which means you both have to yell really loud at each other for the next uh, half hour. But no, here's how it'll work. Uh, Calvin Ridley suspended for the 2022 NFL season after he sat out all of the 2021 season, basically, for various issues uh, for gambling. Uh, the reports are he spent uh, 1500 bucks or something on a fa- on a DraftKings parlay or something like that. Uh, but that, uh, not good. Can't do that. Bad news. Uh, some people look at this as way too much. Uh, some say not enough. I'll let, uh, let's see here. Who do I want to flip a coin here? And let's see who has this one first. Uh, Ryan, I will let you have first go at this. Where do you come down on the Kelvin Ridley thing? Uh, after thinking about it a while, um, I'm not I'm not as as hard lined as I was before. I, I don't like Well now you're gonna kill the whole the segment. Guy. I don't like killing the suspending the guy for a whole season. Um I understand that the NFL has to take a hard stance. Let me start with that. Right? I get it. I understand why. It does feel like the punishment doesn't fit the crime of it to me. Hmm. Uh where he was it it was he wasn't with the team, he he wasn't influencing games. It was for a stretch of five days, and he com- he fully cooperated with the investigation. Uh, all those things together, to me, as a first time offender, especially, say, you know, a, a, maybe a, a slap on the wrist, but a hard slap on the wrist, right? Maybe maybe half the season, but a full season of games for a guy who messed up for five days. I, I don't like it. I don't like the precedent it sets. I don't like that when you set it against the punishments for other things in the league, that it feels inconsistent with league policies. I don't like that when you have an owner that's paying, allegedly paying a coach to throw games, uh, there's, Alle- there's that's allegedly is the key that. word in that sentence. Allegedly uh, is the key and, word. And, and you have, you know, the, the sexual harassment stuff in Washington that's going on. And there's been very little, uh, <laughs> actual punishment along that. In addition to the, the the juxtaposition with the, the stance the NFL's taken on things like domestic violence, this feels like overkill. So, okay, but can I just jump in real quick on that one? the pro- The problem is not the year long suspension for Ridley. The problem with that is that they've lacked to have punishment on other things that they should have. So no, I, don't, I, I don't like I don't... that comparison because we we can sit here and try to compare the two. Um, but the the issue is not that Ridley should be shorter; it's the other ones should be longer. Sorry, I'll let, I'll let you keep going. Though. Well, all I'm saying is it, it it to me doesn't feel like the the, the punishment for the crime is the bottom line to me. Yeah, it just it just feels like it was too harsh for a first time offender who fully who fully cooperated and and only only did this for five days when he wasn't with the team and wasn't playing in the games. All right, Zach, I will let you have the uh, the uh, rebuttal. Okay, so the problem is not that we're worried that he had some insider information on the $1,000 he wagered. The problem is is that it's a very short walk to, hey, you're down, you know, hey, you're down 1500 that you bet. Now you're down 15000 Now you're down 150000 You know what? Just drop a couple passes next week and you owe us nothing. And you already have several conspiracy theorists out there, right? I mean, Tim, you you talk about a few that you know all the time, right? A lot of tinfoil every, hat guys out there, right? Every and 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 my I've got a good friend who questions the legitimacy of the game already. And now, I mean, just okay. So imagine when Ridley comes back. And the Vikings, you know, are in the last week of the season and they need a Falcons win to get into the playoffs. And Ridley drops a pass in the fourth quarter. Right? All of your friends are going to go nuts. And it's, you, you cannot have gambling in sports by the participants because it brings up the legitimacy that it's an actual competition. You can't have that. Right, and I mean, I, I don't, I don't disagree. WWF, yeah. Can you bet WWF I, on DraftKings? I don't think you can. I think so. I, don't I think you can, can on some like your um, like some the Royal Rumble websites and stuff. Oh, okay, but th- that's the problem, right? Is 
We're, uh, I'm not. I'm not worried that he had insider information and made an, an extra whatever if he bet. You know, when he was away, that's not the problem. The problem is, is that those guys fall behind, and that's the short distance to it. And you can say that Calvin Ridley's got a lot of money, and he's not going to, um, you know, if he loses a couple thousand dollars, it's not a big deal. But man. Some other guys aren't making a ton. It, it's just such a slippery slope. You can't have it in sports. You can't have it. You should, and and you think it's too much. I don't think it's enough. He should be done, <laughs> right? It should be Pete Rose. He's out. And I've heard that, a few I mean, people that's... say that. I've heard people say that too. Uh, I have definitely heard both of your arguments here in the last week. I'm fascinated by it. I and, do. And here's this. This is this is the perspective I come from too on it. Is like I I used to kind of be in the boat that you were in, Ryan. Right when I was younger, and my my dad is or was the biggest Pete Rose fan in the world. Right in the seventies, Big Red Machine, he was everything. And when he got caught gambling, my dad is like, "That is the absolute worst thing ever." Right, like he should be done forever. And it's and it's hard, right? We can talk about. I mean, Tim and I talked about the Hall of Fame last week, and it never made it to air, but. It, the, the sporting world, you cannot have questions of if it's actually legit. It's true, that's especially now with the expansion of gambling. I think that's the big part of this. With with every state starting to legalize gambling, Minnesota's on the way, by the way, uh, baby. 14-4 out of the bipartisan vote in the House this morning uh, in the committee. My guy, Representative Stevenson, at the uh, Minnesota State House, that got through this morning through committee in the house, so it's on its way here in Minnesota, Bibbs. Let's go. Sounds like it's going to make it through the Senate too. Let's go, my guy Zach, who I did middle school theater with. I knew he'd come through for me. That is my guy. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I will say, I will but say with this. the expansion I, of gambling, not, Ryan, you can't you you can't take these chances with every state starting to dive in on it on gambling I and am, it being everywhere. I need to be really clear. I am not opposed to punishment. I'm not. I'm not opposed to making an example. I just think for a first time offender who could easily learn his lesson and and just say don't do it don't do it again uh, I, I just think you lose a year of a young career of a guy who's really good and it's he's not even it, young he's like 28 <laughs> Calvin Ridley was a 20 year old senior in high school he was, was a 21 really? year old true freshman at Alabama is that true no way is that true he is 27 yeah he's up there what he's, so <clears throat> And here, here's the other thing too. I'm, I'm just gonna say this. He posted on Twitter a lot, right? He kind of went off. Like he, he doesn't he sound very contrite. Of, uh, I will say this: he doesn't show me a lot of contrition online. No, does not. No, and which is guess what? Same shit Pete Rose did. Um, but he posts. Oh, I only gambled a thousand five hundred dollars. I don't have a problem, dude. You risked an eleven million dollar contract. For a thousand five hundred dollars of an action of action, you have a problem. <laughs> Speaking of Fair. gambling, Fair. Zach, did you win I mean, my? Literally, like, so what? What? What is the allure to him to gamble? Right? I under- I don't I understand mean, it. Yeah, I don't get it. It's it's not like he was like, hey, I can make a you know, this is a sure thing. I can parlay this thousand bucks into five grand, like. The dude probably lights a thousand dollar bill on fire when he smokes a cigar. <laughs> you know, like I I have never first of all, there's still a lot we don't know about his sitting out of the season. I mean, he hasn't really talked about that. We haven't heard anything about that. Not that he has to, he doesn't know us anything on that. But I, I think it does speak to like the timing is weird, right? You had to take the season off, you had to get away from football. So you gamble on football, like in the middle of the when your see when your team's out there and you're kind of they're dying, they're getting beat and all that stuff, and you're still getting paid and you're sitting out the season, like just because, like it's not like he blew out his ACL week one and sat out. No, he literally just said, "I'm out. I'm not playing. I got to take care of myself, and I'm I'm just not going to do this." And he didn't really talk about it with anybody, but like feel good enough to gamble on it. And I mean, not just like a five dollar fantasy league. Like you're gambling some pretty good dollars. That's pretty. I mean, I think you got to answer for that at some point. I, yeah, I, I, I get where you're coming from, Ryan. Like I understand it, but like, and I, and again, right? This is kind of going into the other NFL issues 
right? Like an owner paying or trying to pay a coach to lose, he should also not be in the NFL. Hundred percent. If they prove that right? that's true, you're it. out. Yeah. If they can find, if they can prove that, he should be done. Hundred percent. I'll, I'll also say this. You know, you said, oh, it's you know, first time offender or whatever. Well, it's the first time he got caught. It's true. We don't we don't know, right? I mean, they talk about that all the time, right? Like the guy who gets pulled over for a DUI, it's not the first time he drove drunk. It's the first time he got pulled over when he was drunk. That's you true. Know? And so, I, and we don't know if he gambled more or not, but it's there's definitely the question of that. So I don't know. I just it's unfortunate, and it's probably the best thing for the NFL that. You know, the Rodgers deal happened, and then the trade happened. Wait, what are the odds of that? Here come the tinfoil hat guys. Funny. The, get, the Ridley news comes out, and all of a sudden, here comes the quarterback news to get rid of all of that. Funny how that works. But that's, I mean, that's a, a I mean, Ryan, it's, it's the best thing for them. No lie. One of my tinfoil hat guys believes that the Eagles-Vikings-NFC championship game was rigged, that the Vikings intentionally threw it, uh, and that the 41 donut was rigged as well. Vikings 41 donut. Look, what, what's, was, what's the theory behind the Philadelphia one? The Philadelphia one was, there was no way that that offense all of a sudden could stop playing. They could just stop. Like, it was like Philly figured us out. It's like, there's no way we had to have taken, there must've been a league order or there must've been Z- Zimmer had a know, pay or something, but they took a dive. They took a dive against the I Eagles. Am, I am I am somebody who frequently will question the decisions of a referee, right? I, I am yeah, not I shy say, about Ryan my, is almost in question. tinfoil hat country, almost no, no, when it comes no. to blaming officials. He I'm has not, definitely I'm not accused claiming officials. It's rigged. Of... I don't claim it's rigged. It's not rigged. All right. I think there are terrible calls, and I think those calls influence games. But they're human. They make mistakes. I just wish that they were held ac- accountable for those mistakes. Or so I he say, just wishes those right? mistakes went for his team more often. So I, I I really, I do wish that they were held accountable for their mistakes. There were way too many mistakes in refereeing across the league. It's not just the Vikings that get it, right? It happens to every team in the league, but it happens too often is my point. The league isn't rigged. The people who say the league is rigged, look, have you not watched the Vikings your entire life? That loss to Philadelphia, that 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 it was a blowout even, was so predictable it hurts. Right? We all hoped. There we, we hoped we all hoped that they'd do well. And I hate to rehash this for you. Not on, not all of us, but, but <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, all right. But you know, Vikings fans all hoped, right, that 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 they could pull it off there. But it, look. It took a miracle to beat a Saints team at home that you were up 17 nothing against at halftime. The offense was getting stopped throughout the second half of that game. Is it ridiculous to think that a better Philadelphia defense was going to stop them at home in Philadelphia? No. And it's ridiculous to, to say that, that it was rigged that they did get stopped. And it's the same thing with 41 Donut. Let's not pretend that that team was better than that Giants defense. They just weren't. I just my. Anytime I hear people talking about stuff being rigged, I I just I, in my head I go, what was the motivation for, uh, Nick Foles right Philadelphia Super Bowl like you know what I mean in like, Minnesota in they, Minnesota didn't want Minnesota, Minnesota to host right. yeah didn't want them to host didn't want them to host and and that's that's how you know that's kind of my thing too like when they're talking about like ah oh, it's rigged for Green Bay, I'm like you know so the team without an owner, right. <laughs> The team that doesn't have a guy in the room, the team that's in the smallest market, like they, it's not rigged for Green Bay. You know, like I, I just that's the stuff that drives me nuts. Like, uh, I, it, it'd be it'd be like if the WWF decided one day, like, hey, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put the belt on the Red Rooster. <laughs> you know, here we go. Are you saying Green Bay is the Red Rooster? Come on, that is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just saying, like in terms of towns and big markets, right? It's it's not it's not Hogan and Macho Man. It's fair, you know. I'm and and don't get me wrong. Like I mean, it's a, it's a great atmosphere and a great town and all that. But you know, like it, it, that's not what moves the financial needle of the league. That's, that's right. Very if, fair. if the league was rigged, there wouldn't be a team in Green Bay anymore. <laughs> and, and look, look. look. The NFL, like every other league, 
and this kind of gets back to the gambling conversation too, right? Has a vested interest in appearing impartial and fair. The game has to be fair. If it's not, no one would watch, right? It has to be. We have to assume that the game is fair. It's also a federal crime if it's not, by the way. That's true. Absolutely true. Regulated by law, by Congress. It is regulated. There is absolutely no reason to think that the NFL rigs games. Now, are there teams that may decide, do we want to win or lose this game for game theory and draft purposes? We can get into that. Case in point, the accusations made against the Miami Dolphins this year. Yep. Right? Which, again, if they can prove it, if they can prove it, fantastic. Prove it. Right. But teams can decide, is my point, right? If, if individual teams, but that team isn't saying, you know what? You know what we really want right now? We want Philadelphia to beat Minnesota. Because if Philadelphia beats Minnesota in the NFC title game, X, Y, or Z is going to happen for us in Miami who didn't make the playoffs. That doesn't happen. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're talking You're talking about, like, right, Doug Peterson, and his right. record from the Eagles. Yeah, right? I mean, exactly. Clearly, I don't. They were not trying to lose the game, but they were not interested in winning the game either. You right. know, that wasn't on their priority list. But I also think when you get to that week, like that's that's the reality of football, right? Like they have the option to do that, to put in other guys, whatever. So I don't, I don't think that they tried to lose the game, but they also didn't. They weren't Try actively pursuing. It's like it's they're like right. preseason games. I don't think any of the preseason teams want to lose. I don't think that's their interest to lose. But I don't think they're the result is immaterial, right? right. I mean, I think that's right. exactly it. Oh, gentlemen, it, yeah. So it's it's a um that that was a long way from the Calvin Ridley stuff, but that's that's why I'm so hard on it. Yeah. Like you know, and oh, yeah, you look at the tentacles that that conversation creates. You see it right there. That's exactly what happens, though, when the Kelvin Ridley stuff goes unchecked, is that it creates yeah, and the, that and the conversation. People, I, the people who also argue, the other argument I've heard is, well, the NFL promotes gambling, and now they're not going to let one of their guys do it. Yes, like, exactly. Yeah. 100%. Exactly. But the, but the guy knows that when he signs his $11 million a year deal. Like, that's something I give up. I can't gamble. I mean, hell, there's a reason why, like, Las Vegas ga- uh, blackjack dealers can't play blackjack in their own casino. There's yeah. a reason for that. You know, I also can't smoke weed even if it's legal. Right. Although I heard that Denver was considering making it illegal just to appease Russell Wilson again. Well, I mean, Ryan's guy, McDaniel, I mean, is that guy not never not high? I swear to God, every interview with that guy on TV, it's like listening to Jeff Spicoli at Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I mean, Ryan wants to party with Mike McDaniel, something fierce. You're right, I do. <laughs> that guy is uh, that guy's legit. He seems kind of, I don't know, he just seems a little batshit crazy to me. I don't know. I'm a little worried about this Mike McDaniel. Very concerned. If I'm Miami, I'm not sure I'm hitching my wagon to that. I think Snoop smokes less weed than Mike McDaniel. I think there's a real chance that that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh is it possible i don't think it's possible ryan's distracted right now he's probably looking at a picture of mike mcdaniel smoking nobody, nobody sure. smokes more weed than snoop Are you sure? <laughs> no sorry i got a work email real quick I, i'm just i'm walking in for the night so uh, just, it was just a weird email oh, okay I, I know we're we're at the end here any any pretty i mean i feel like the two big jobs left right are steelers quarterback and maybe the bucks quarterback yeah we got to settle those things right we got the, so the ones was, any predictions there ryan i mean i'm i'm i have no clue on the bucks uh you know the, the bucks to me feel like a team that doesn't really have the capital to trade for somebody and I, I, they may end up just rolling with Kyle Trask uh you know they 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 may just see who they have for for a year um the uh, the the Steelers are an interesting situation. I, I think that, um, I think the most likely situation is that they draft a guy this year. I think Kenny Pickett would be their pick because they they love their hometown guys, and he's a Pittsburgh quarterback with so, his dainty girl you know, hands. It's not a, so he doesn't not. have Pittsburgh hands. Uh, I, I think that the most likely scenario for them, uh, pending the Deshaun Watson decision, is is Kenny Pickett. My my prediction is Kenny Pickett in Pittsburgh and Gardner Minshew in Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. Oh, Gardner Minshew in Tampa. That'd be sick. The mustache returns. 
actually, I'd like to see Gardner Minshew in Indianapolis. Uh, go to go play Jacksonville twice a year. Uh, and show him what he's worth. I think the domino. Well, I, I'm with you. The domino that needs to fall is Deshaun Watson. We have to know that because everything else falls into place after we know that. Because we know Houston's going to move them. We know yeah, that that's going to happen. I, I would say don't rule out Pittsburgh as a Kirk Cousins destination either. Uh, oh, wow. They have said that they are interested in a veteran quarterback. They do not want to draft somebody to start this year. They will if they have to, but that's not their desired outcome. So, you know, Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Watson, somebody uh, could be the pick there in Pittsburgh. And if that all falls through, if they decide that the price is too much, that the, the Watson stuff doesn't pan out for them the way that they had hoped, uh, then there's going to be the option to draft somebody at 20 if they absolutely have to. Wow. We are going to keep all an right. eye on that for quarterback carousel number two. Before we leave, Zach, what's in the glass tonight? Uh, vodka and a little a splash of rock star with it. What are you, 16 uh, years? Are you 22 years old? Like, what is the deal here? Like, that is a, uh, are you going to the club afterward? I'm 24 hours from spring break. Um, this whole week I've basically been mainlining caffeine. (laughs) I'm, I'm on the ropes here and I'm just trying to get, you were fighting through it. You and me both, brother. We're fighting through it. Something awful. Well, and, and I, I think I told you, you know, like one of the other sixth grade teachers has put in their notice. Yep. Um, and it's the one that I share a class, right? My, I share a block with. I can't imagine the checkout factor is uh, low there. I can't imagine. Well, what I can't figure out is like, why don't you just call in sick the last week? Like you've, you've got, got the you've sick got days. The days. You've got the days off. You can't take them with you. And you're not going to get hired again in the district when you bail mid year. No. Like, so yeah, I'm just trying to get through it. Hang in there, my friend. I'm proud of you. Rhino, uh, thanks for not sharing your 1919 root beer with me. Uh, that that was fine. I'm, I'll get over it. Thank you. But I appreciate you thinking of me. Maybe tomorrow you'll bring one to it's, the to the coach at the practice. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, just saying. Yeah, I can I way. can bring those after I stop and pick up your shirts. Thank you, my friend. Let's go. Let's go, guys. It's been a month, but it's good to see you. Thanks for being on the pod tonight. I appreciate you very much. Um, thanks again for listening, everybody. We have been gone for a month, but I appreciate you coming back to the pod and listening to us as always. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, don't forget, Lauren. Is Lauren in tomorrow night, Ryan? Is it happening? Sure is. Sp- yep, oh, let's night. go. Damn it. Let's do it. Lauren, Peak Cinema, back tomorrow. Uh, we are uh, watching a modern classic tomorrow. It's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. With a, uh, with a special announcement. Special tomorrow, announcement right here on the pod don't miss it. It's going to be fantastic. So wherever you get your podcast, please make sure you subscribe and listen. And Ty might be coming in Sunday for a little post players championship uh, recap. That's going to be really fun uh, as well. That'll be great. So until next time for Zach, for Ryan's Tim saying, keep your head up and we'll see you.